Raboff positions, Samantha positions, what's the all-time champion? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and one of the most common questions I get is, when do you use Samantha positions? When do you use Raboff positions? How do these two systems, or can these two systems coexist with each other? The answer is a resounding yes. I incorporate them both into my own playing and my own teaching every single day. And when I was getting ready to do a talk a few years ago, my friend and colleague, Nicholas Walker, passed along these great slides that he's used at conferences to explain the positions. And I thought there's no better way than what Nick Walker put together. So we're gonna dig into those and take a look at the advantages, disadvantages, and how to incorporate these into your own playing and teaching. Okay, let's take a look at the Samandal positions. Here they are, and we have all these half positions in between the main positions. But if we take those away, these are the main positions. First position, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then thumb position. Now, this is going to contrast a lot from the Roboff positions. And if you want to learn more about the Samandal technique, Samandal method, I filmed an entire video about that. I will link up to that here. But we just move through these positions and you can see that notes fall kind of into multiple positions as you move up the bass. And like Nicholas puts here, the Samandal technique, the position technique, it's a diatonic chromatic bass position system. So you are working up the bass note by note, half step by half step, and it really is kind of the way you play the bass on a gig in an orchestra or in many jazz settings. So quite useful in terms of practicality, but you can just see how many positions there are. It's an awful lot to take in. The Raboff position system is considerably less complex. We have six positions. And right away, you notice there is no thumb position right here. I filmed an entire video on the pivot system. It's linked up to here. But the way it works is you leave the thumb and you shift between the notes. And now sometimes that works better in certain situations than other. I actually find that when I'm in this area, I think of this more as like a region on the bass. First region, second region, third region. More so than a position, particularly if I'm hanging out in that lower register on the bass, I am typically moving my thumb to get back to that G sharp or to get up to where this hand is in this diagram. Now you notice as we go up here, we have the G, D, G, D, outline, and if you start to think about what these notes actually are on the bass, they are all harmonics, which is a very cool way to do a position system. So that really is the big difference between these two systems is that everything is based in the Roboff position system around natural harmonics. Everything is much more diatonic chromatic, like Nicholas said, as you go up the bass with Samandal. And they both have their pluses and minuses, and that's kind of how these two systems work. They can work well together, and that's the beauty of this diagram, just sort of wrapping your brain around how this works. Again, if I am teaching somebody the bass, I really like using these Raboff positions because I, they lend themselves to more diatonic playing. The fact that harmonics are what they're based around makes it very easy to find the notes. If I'm prepping somebody to play in an orchestra or to get better at reading, parts in ensembles, I find the Samandal method to be quite useful for that because it really does give you the tools that you need for the job. That's a look at how to incorporate the Samandal and Raboff positions. If you'd like to learn more about these systems, check out this video we've got linked up. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.